Hey folks, welcome. Hi. Jennifer, Jennifer over there. Jennifer. Yep, here yep. I am. Uh, Beth had something come up the last minute, so she couldn't join us tonight. So you get the yeah. two of us. Yay. <laughs> Woohoo. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer's got a cool project we're going to see here in a bit. We were just talking about. So um, a bunch of French oh, yeah. knots. It looks pretty, pretty neat. All right. So uh, tonight I've, I've set up uh, as part of our um, uh, uh, Mystery in San Tropez, I've set up to show those who don't know how I how I put a canvas on a, uh, a set of stretcher bars and I have um, uh, the uh, Evertites so since that's the only expandable ones you can get these days so uh, I'll be showing that tonight I'll just take you through it from scratch to finish I'm not going to put all the tacks in but uh, so if you're wondering about that or if you have someone who's doing the San Tropez thing and has never done it before uh, this will be the show to for them to watch for that whole part of the process. And then I posted today, along with the midweek show, uh, a video Beth and I did where we uh, opened our packages from um, uh, Needle and Haystack. So you can see our threads. And then Jennifer is... is Missed that one. Jennifer is um, uh, <laughs> flying by the seat of her pants. So she's got... We'll look, we'll look here in a little bit at the ones that she's looking at to uh, figure out what thread she wants. So she's just going to do it on the fly, which is going to be fun to watch. So um, we'll look at that in a little bit too. Uh, Sunday is Tracy Franklin uh, from the UK, uh, Royal School of Needlework, 10 years there, uh, brilliant uh, needleworker of all kinds, teacher, the whole bit. She was one of those where we could have done three hours, but we only did one hour with her. Uh, really a terrific lady, so I'll uh, be sure and catch that. Now, on your uh, prayer list, if, if prayer is something that you do, uh, Kathy Ray and her husband uh, got COVID over the weekend, and uh, Kathy wrote today and said that she has COVID, and they were well enough by Sunday, Monday to go home according to the regulations, and then got home, and now she can't taste. So now she's got additional mm -hmm. symptoms, so now it's progress to Did, another stage so were they uh, in the hospital no i don't think so oh well, um, the going home i don't they live in california so maybe yeah, the rules are they were they were in phoenix over the weekend so oh it, that going home okay yeah they were, um, all right yeah so they spent the weekend in the in the hotel room you know there you go okay. uh so if prayer is something you do uh kathy and her husband could use it along with a million other people who have covid um but uh um, Kathy on our minds these days uh, and so it so if you're ordering uh, Saint Tropez threads she's probably working her business is probably the store is probably working shorthanded so you know be patient a couple of days if you order uh, a kit of threads and cloth because um, I'm sure the people at the store are going oh no <laughs> one <laughs> one less person um, oh, and then uh, remind you that um, uh, Leslie's book, Threads of Awakening, is now mm -hmm. available. It was uh, available on the uh, 23rd, so you, you can order that now. The two people who won books, it, your books have not shipped because uh, I was really concerned. They're paperback books, and I was really concerned that they get to you and not be bent up. So Marg and I had to do a little monkeying around and find uh, the right packaging for uh, those books. So uh, we got them all packaged up now. I just didn't want them to come with corners bent. So Margus uh, fixed them up and uh, we're confident now that we can mail them to you um, and that they'll get there in, in like new condition. So uh, those are coming to you, probably get mailed tomorrow along with the winners from tonight. So um, uh, uh, sorry about that, but we just kind of, you know, and getting, getting a minute to go do the shopping and get the right packages uh, just wasn't happening. So uh, if you, the two people who won books, uh, sorry, but uh, they're they're on their way. They're all packaged up. They'll be on their way. Um, so uh, so yeah. So watch our video, the video Beth and I did uh, about our threads, because it isn't just here. Look at our threads, aren't they cool? We talked about uh, some just some thoughts we had on how we might use them and what we might change and so on and so forth. So that uh, we we had a good time doing it. So I hope you'll enjoy uh, <laughs> enjoy that. And then. Um, uh, just uh, if you haven't listened to the 
uh, podcast today, we talked quite a bit about the Rosewood Manor charts, the new set of charts that Karen Kluba has out. She really uh, did a job. And so you can see those in the video uh, on YouTube. And then I made a slideshow uh, at wetalkfiber.com so you can see those there. Um, Winter Hill is one of them. So if you're yep. collecting the if you're collecting the set of hills, um, it's gorgeous. Those it, it, those were all beautiful. Yeah, all of them. I was like, wow. Yeah, that may be yeah. may be one of her better series. I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But all the new releases she has coming out, they're all amazing. Yep. Like all of them, they're all good. No. <laughs> yeah, really good stuff from Karen. So. Um, yeah. Uh, be sure and check those out. And uh, of course, Kim at Sassy Jacks uh, uh, will have all of them. Uh, you can order from her if you want, or your local store, Needle and Haystack. Uh, I'm sure Kathy will have them. So, um, uh, but check those out because there's some really, really good stuff there. Uh, let's see. Oh, winners from last week, the charts that Dee Longo uh, provided. So, winners were Dee Neely. It was like if you have a name D, you win, I guess. Uh, D, <laughs> D. Neely, uh, Kathy Shannon, Lori Mann, and Susan Hennig uh, were the winners. Now, those actually got mailed yesterday because Marga mailed those while she was shopping for packaging for the books. It becomes a thing. So, um, yeah. so D. Neely, Kathy Shannon, Lori Mann, Susan Hennig, I would guess by the end of the week or Monday at the latest, you should have your, uh, your charts. Now, we do have giveaway tonight. Marcy Brown sent me a whole bunch of stuff. And so we have giveaway tonight. And uh, these are all, uh, the subject is going to be canvas. So down here uh, for, okay, the, the usual spiel. The drawing is for people who uh, participate in the live show because I do the drawing right after the show. And you, it, during the show at any time, send an email to Gary at wetalkfiber.com right down there at the bottom, right over there, right under Jennifer. Uh, and then for this first set of three, uh, we're going to use the, works, the, sub, the subject line canvas. So you put in canvas as a subject line, then you put your name and address in the body of the email, and that's how you enter. So we're going to have two different drawings tonight. Uh, one is canvas, and then the other is army. You can enter one, the other, or both. I don't care. Just enter once for each one. Um, so, and I'll tell you about the Army one in a minute because that was one we talked about in the, uh, in the um, uh, podcast today. But so these from Marcy are all uh, counted canvas. And there, uh, two of them are quilt block, block uh, from Foxwood Crossing. This is ribbon wreath quilt block. And these are small. Uh, so, uh, you know, if, if you want to just try a small thing, what's the stitch count on this here? 70 by, uh, uh, yeah, 73 by 73. So these are small, uh, small. So here's, um, here's ribbon wreath. So that's one of them. So that's pretty neat. Pretty. Yeah. I'm sure in the quilting world, it's a standard quilt block of some kind. Uh, I think it's the carpenters. Is it? Wheel carpenter block. Yeah. Okay. And one then this favorite. one's called Santa's Star. I like this one. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. So, you know, that's the kind of thing where you could put, again, 73 by 73. Yeah, you know, put three or four together or string out three of them mm -hmm. and do stuff mad or whatever. So those yeah. two, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then this one, a Catherine Drummond uh, design called Ginger, uh, called Wavelength. I guess, oh, Catherine Drummond is the gingerbread girl. But anyway, this one's called mm -hmm. Wavelength. This is a little more involved. This is a 20 by 20 inch canvas to, to do this. Oh, that's pretty. But that's pretty neat too. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yep. So to be in the drawing for those three, you send an email and the subject line is canvas. Please remember to put your uh, name and address in the uh, body of the email. That way I got some place to send them. So those three... So three people for that one. And then this one is going to be the subject line army. And uh, this came from, uh, who was it? Uh, Karen, Karen Brumley sent this to, it, to me. Ann Mahoney suggested that Karen send it so that we could do a giveaway. 
So, and, and the reason I'm, I'm doing this is a separate one. And this one, the subject line is Army, because this, this is not for everyone. You know, there's going to be someone who has a child in the Army or a spouse or a close relative or somebody who uh, made a career in the Army or whatever. And um, uh, so this, this is old. This is uh, 1986. And this um, Judith Brown is the designer, and she did, uh, she did a bunch for all the uh, services. But I, I, you can't, I can hold this chart up because oh, you wow. can't, there's no way you're going to take a picture and no, chart from this. that's cool. But yeah, so there's the Army, uh, 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 Department of the Army plaque. There's the Army mule. <laughs> um, nice. There's a West Point one. There's uh, uh, this is an officer's hat and glove. Nice. So there's you know, and there's several things in here. So if if army is, you know, in your family and you want to do something, here's a chart to uh, uh, do that. Oh, here's all the here's all the um, or a number of the uh, uh, officer. Like yeah. there's first sergeant, sergeant first the class. Insignia is what they're yeah, called. Yeah, the the shoulder patch thing. Yeah. Yeah, I I was not in the military, so I don't know. Um, Specialist, I've corporal. I've never been military adjacent, so. <laughs> yeah. So there's all of those. And then uh, U.S. Army hat device. And so, um, anyway. Those bookmarks? Yeah, it looks like. Those long skinny things, yeah. those have got to be bookmarks, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. But you can also make them into little uh, pillows or ornaments or, you know. Yeah. So, so this. figurines. This, this uh, we're making a separate drawing for this. So use the subject really line cool. army. So making a sec separate drawing just because uh, this is not for everyone. Uh, but but I'm, I was pretty confident there would be at least a few people in the audience who, um, who would, uh, uh, would want this because there's something to stitch there for them that would be for somebody special in their lives. So um, Alphabet on the back so you can personalize it. You know, the whole shoot and match. It's really, really good. Nice. Um, first thing I do with these, uh, these blue things is uh, um, Xerox them to get a black and white one because these are hard to read <laughs> as blue. Oh, and, yeah. for you, yeah. Yeah, think about that. It's, uh, well, they're hard oh to read goodness. for everyone. If it was red and green, I'd be in trouble. But um, <laughs> uh, uh, So, yeah, so you're going to want to make a Xerox copy uh, to work on it. Uh -huh. But uh, so thanks to Karen for sending that. So that's a separate one. So you can enter one, the other, both. Uh, just enter once in each one. Um, but uh, uh, you know, army. I, I figured there was some army people um, who would enjoy having this chart. And I, I assume she's got uh, anchors away charts for the Navy, Esprit de Corps for Marines, Eagles aloft for the Air Force, and then she has a Guantanamo Bay uh, leaflet. Um, so, but 86, they're probably all out of print. So you, you know, the other ones, yeah. you'd have to hunt You'd down. have to look on those D stash yeah. places on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. And... yeah. So, but the, the original price, 495. So if somebody wants 70 bucks for these, tell them to take a hike. Um, not worth yeah. that. Uh, so thanks Goodness. to Karen for sending that. So that's, a, that's one drawing. And then the three uh, counted canvas pieces are um, are the other. So yep. I, I thought Beautiful. I saw Kim's name. Uh, oh yeah, she's there. Yeah, Kim, Kim confirm that you'll have, we talked about Karen Kluba's new charts um, and I told, I made the bold step of saying that you would have them all, the new charts so people could order from you. So if that's not the case, squat, but I'm pretty sure you can get them. So um, order from Sassy Jacks if you want those those charts. <laughs> Um, or, you know, whomever, but, you know, we go to Sassy Jacks. <laughs> um, I've had a couple of people ask me, uh, I posted the picture of the box and showed it a couple weeks ago of what we sent to Madagascar. And I've had a couple people write to me and say, will we be doing a second mailing? And I'm more than happy to do that. And so uh, if, if people uh, you know, now want to do another contribution, 
uh, I'm happy to do that. Just write to me, same, same address that's under uh, Jennifer's uh, chin there, um, and just write to me and I will send you my address. And so it's, it's a DMC floss, so it's good quality six strand cotton floss. Doesn't have to be DMC, but not that, uh, not that cheap floss that you know, they use for girls, you know, like you can go to Joann's and get that girls make bracelets out of. Not that, I mean, these yeah. women are serious about what they do. So good quality cotton floss and then uh, uh, needles. And um, uh, that's the only they two like things. They like the pointy, right? Yeah, right. They like the chenille sharps. needles. Right, sharp needles. Uh, yeah. So, so send me an email. I'll send you my address, and then you mail them to me. And then, you know, in a couple three months, uh, we'll see what we collect, and then I'll ship those off to, uh, um, yeah, her name. Yes. Yeah. It'll come to me in a bit. So, yeah, if you want to do that, if you want to do it, or you've uh, now changed your mind and didn't think you had anything and realized all those threads that are sitting in a box <laughs> that you probably could move on to somebody who could use them. Um, we'll, we'll do another shipment. Um, Rebecca? Ah, can't remember. So um, mm. uh, there's that. How come Dalimore? Rebecca Dalimore. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, so anyway, um, if you want to do that, fine. Now, uh, cool. I want to see the, yeah, show us the, um, I'm going to go all Jennifer here. I want to see the, the French knot thing that you were talking about. Yeah, there's the. Oh, okay. Um, sure. Yeah, so that, because that looked pretty cool. So what is this that you have now? Yeah, so this is, it's called, here's the top. Miniature Knotwork by Teresa Lehman Designs. And I got the Bless This House one, cute little houses. And it's all French knots. And it'll finish French knots or colonial knots. What was the and finish size? Finish what was the finish size there on the cover? Three by five. Okay. Three so and a half it, okay. by five. So like the size of a um, index card. Yeah. So you won't be French making French knots the rest of your life. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I did all. So I I've done the um, the windows in the houses, and it's I don't know. My lighting I'm not set up for this very well. Uh, now we'll get the making idea. Making it worse. Anyway, it, these are it's gold. And the French knots are wee, itty bitty. Yeah. And so everything see. will be done in French knots. Yeah, French knots are colonial knots. Huh. And um, yeah, and it kind of gives the look of punch needle, but yeah. without having to do the punching, my yeah. shoulders and my arm and my hand get really sore from punching. <laughs> this is better. <laughs> So, so yeah, I, my neat. friend Nancy does these a lot, and I'll sh you look at her finished ones, and they are gorgeous. A lot of texture, so I, was I imagine. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I have to get one of those. So I got one when I went to Thistle the other day to get stretcher bars. I needed stretcher bars. Cool. Yay. So, yeah. And then I got some Pearl 5 for my Tamari ball, too. All right. Do you want to see the, the well, latest flower? Of course, we'll we'll dro drool over it. Oh, Kim confirming it, that yes, she will get uh, Karen Kluba stuff. Do check that stuff out, especially the Winter Hill is really good. Man, this is just Let's the neatest see. thing. I can so look this, at this is every the week. one. This is the latest one that I've worked on. Mm -hmm. Is that one? And you see how the middle part there is like all woven? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Pretty cool. That is neat. So yeah, <laughs> that's the only, I mean, you know, we have the patterns for two others, but that's the only one I've done so far. So. Yeah. Not not a lot of work on the Tamari ball. Yeah, that's all right. That is one so. cool thing, yeah. That's great. Uh, yep. I finished the August Cottage. Oh yeah, you did. 
my little house. I got that one done in just like a few days and I started on September. I want to get these things done. I've been working on this for like two years and what I, you, what I are want you them all do finished. Them? I put them up. Um, I have a little thing. I put them up in my dining room oh. and I'm supposed to change them out every month. And it's still a February. <laughs> so that's going well. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got through August finished now, but have I mounted? Look, March is sitting here, right here. Here's March <coughs> with the fabric that I picked out to go with good, it. Good plan, Jennifer. <laughs> Waiting to be finished. All that I have to do is cut out some board and stick it together. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting here since probably February. <laughs> You'll be early for next March. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I have so many projects. It's just insane. <laughs> Good plan. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. So what, what, else, what else do we want to do? Um, well, let me, uh, let me go through the uh, uh, mounting of the canvas for those who uh, don't know. And the rest of you just right. bear with me. And um, Alrighty. Uh, we'll, we'll do it. So. Okay, this is going to be weird. All right. Here, I'm going to turn this here. Okay, so what uh, I, I did several things here. So we'll, we'll, put the, we'll put the thing aside. This is just a, an old towel, just to have a dark background. You don't need, you don't need it, and there's no official towel. Um, <laughs> it's just an old towel. Uh, the first thing uh, is, uh, for, for me, is always to find the center, and I already taped this before uh, I found the center. But this is how I do it. There's several ways to do it. Different people uh, do it different ways. Because like on, on linen or, or, or um, Ada or you know, something like that, you can just fold it in, co in, in four and uh, mm -hmm. you know, the point is your center. But with canvas, you don't want to go folding it. So this is, right. the way, this is the way I was taught. So you don't have to fold it. And, and all I do is string, I just have a, I have a skein of, of thread of a color I hate and, <laughs> and no, I'll never use. And so I use it for these kinds of things. So I just string um, uh, thread from corner to corner. And then where it crosses, then that's the, uh, that's the center, obviously. And okay, then, got for a second, I thought that was pencil. No. And I was like, you marked it with pencil? No, I don't, I don't mark. <laughs> what? I don't mark my, uh-uh, no, I don't yeah, mark. Yeah, I was like, huh? No. I am really, uh, I really have a lot of trouble putting any marks with pencil or ink or anything. So anyway, yeah, that, that sure. gives you your center, and, and that will give you dead center. And then I use, a, like, this is a little uh, marking needle, like, for quilting and that kind oh, of thing. so cute. And, uh, what, is, and, what is that? Is that, like, a little bird or something? It's just a stone. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, there you go. It's, it's cute. nothing. You know, I don't even know where I got it. So, so that'll give you a, a, um, a center. And then, and then obviously you just pull the threads out. And then, but, but before you pull them out, then you see, I, I just take a little piece of thread and tie that over the cross. Okay. And so it's, that way it's not in the way. It is, you know, it's not a, creating a hassle. And um, uh, then you have your center marked. So, um, so I do that, and then uh, like on a, uh, so like Gan uh, wants us to start in the middle, and her designs, a lot of them start in the middle, and that's where you want to start. Uh, that's all you need to mark. But now on, on a lot of them, I'll start in the upper left, so then uh, I'll put a, a th thread here, and then I'll find the top center, and then I find the top left, and that's where I start. But I like to know the top center, so as I work my way across, if something's out of whack, then I know, here, by the time I get here, I know something's out of whack, rather than, you know, getting all the way over and, and things are out of alignment, and then I've got that much more to tear out right. if I have to, so. Now, um, Gayanne wants you to actually baste in vertical and horizontal lines in X and Y like I do. Yes. In her instructions. Yes. Okay. And do that. Do yeah. that. Uh, cause on, on my lady, I mean, Mary, I do that on my cross stitch anyway, so yeah, but on my lady, uh, lady Mary, uh, the, the Downton Abbey ones, um, mm. I, tr I tried doing one without basting in the lines like she did. 
Right. Uh, I had to tear it out. I got it all goofed oh, up. Oh no. Yeah, got it all goofed <laughs> up. So if Gayan says base the line, based in lines, do it. Right. But knowing where that center is then allows you to baste in the lines because it's easier. Yeah. yeah, and and then you're then once you get that center started, then all that stuff can come out. But what you you got to get that foundation in place, and and uh, the basted the basting uh, helps you do that, and um, uh, then then you're off and running. You can just take them out and go. But uh, until then, you can um, yeah it, it creates some headaches. Here I'll show you. Um, so this is, this is the uh, Lady Mary, oh, pretty. Um, Lady Mary, Mary uh, geometric from her Downton Abbey series. And so see, once, once you get these pieces going, then everything builds off that. So I had, right. I had basted lines down and across and uh, then they just get pulled out. So, right. um, yeah. But yeah, if, if Gayan says do it, trust me, do it because I've tried bucking the trend on her charts, <laughs> and it ain't worth the hassle. So right. Um, okay, and then so that's your that finds your center, and do that first, and then then you tape, you tape your uh, uh, edges. Now this one has this one has selvage, so you don't need to tape that edge because there's nothing for anything to catch on. But mm -hmm. uh, the other edges you want to tape, and I tape two of them, because see, you, you don't, these ragged edges, your threads will catch on, especially yeah. silks, and it just tears them all up. So I was just going to show, and this is just cheap artist tape. I mean, I just went to an art store and bought yeah. uh, generic pro artist tape, and you can use... Uh, I just have painter's tape. Right. The blue. The blue one, yeah. Yeah, you can use blue painter's tape. You can use masking tape. Uh, I just prefer to not use it because uh, it can uh, be sticky. Lo long term it leaves that glue and I hate that. Yeah. And pe people yeah. say, oh, that's no, it's going to get cut off anyway. I just hate having that kind of glue anywhere near my stitching. Uh, so right. I, uh, yeah, I don't do that. So it's, it's if, like, if, if you order from uh, Kathy Ray, um, like best, best came all taped. So a lot of shops mm. will tape it because a lot of shops have, a taping machine that makes it go really fast, uh, oh, and then of course okay. their their brand is on there and everything. But if you uh, if you just buy a piece of a big chunk of canvas like I did, then um, uh, all all you got to do well I do it this way uh, is just lay the lay the tape on here like so, and then I mean you know this is this is really simple and then just fold mm -hmm. it over yep and so that's i it. taped two edges of mine because they kind of hung over but the other two edges didn't hang over so mm -hmm. i didn't tape them yeah because they weren't hanging off yeah you may you may wish you taped them mm, I, we'll uh, find out right? yeah yeah I mean, you know about the first I've time only, you... i haven't done this a lot so about the first time you snag a thread, you know, about the first time you snag a thread and have to tear out a stitch, uh, you'll break out the tape. I, I just tape them yeah. just no matter what. So, so uh -huh. now this is ready to go. So it's all tape, but that's all it takes. I mean, it's, the taping part is nothing. And if you buy a roll of tape, you know, this is for, for most of us a lifetime supply. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and cheap and, you know. But like Jennifer said, you know, the painter's tape, I think is probably the same essentially the same stuff. It doesn't leave yeah. any glue behind, peels off. Well, even had, pro it, it almost didn't want to stick. It was like, oh. ah. I'm like, yeah. come on, stick. Now painters, <laughs> the painter, this, the artist tape, uh, this will stick and it will stay, but it will still come off and not leave glue. Right, right. So, so this is ready to mount. Okay, so this is, uh, I've got the center um, if it's a design where I'm starting in the top left, you know, I've figured that all out. I've marked them, I've taped it. Now I'm ready to mount it on the stretcher bars. Now the, the first decision you have to make with your stretcher bars is whether you're going to uh, stitch on top or in the well. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going through all this. A lot of people are, already know all this stuff 
And if you right. have uh, if you have others' advice that you do something different, jump in. You won't offend me. So um, I take my stretcher bar, and now on top or in the well, this is in the well. So this <laughs> is mounting the canvas on the stretcher bars, but on the back. Okay. Right. And and the. Go ahead. The best reason to do that is when you go to finish off on the back, when you get towards the edges, if it's not, if you don't have the back open and on top, then you can't, you can't bury your threads and stuff. It right. gets in the way. That's where. Because I had yeah. asked when I first did needle, first started, I'm like, why are you doing it like that? Because that was totally opposite from how you do most cross stitch. Right. And they were like, well, when you go to the back, I'm like, oh yeah, because it's not. You can't take it out of the hoop or whatever, like cross stitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. On so. small, on smaller, on smaller pieces, I always stitch in the well for that very reason. I want to, because mm -hmm. you get over to the edge and and you just you can't manipulate the needle, and so I always uh, stitch in the well on small ones, and uh, then yeah, then you you don't have anything obstructing you. Now, so, right. now an, another reason to stitch in the well is it will keep your hands off the canvas because your hands will, will be always the width of your um, stretcher bars away from the canvas. So you're not dragging your hand on the, on the thread. Right, because these stitches, they're, a lot of them are be raised. They're right. not all just flush like cross stitch. They, they have dimension and they raise up. And then if you add beads. Yeah. yeah. Now, so, so, that, so like you can see, if, if you stitch on top, then you're gonna drag your hand. Now I'll, mm -hmm. I'll stitch on top with bigger pieces. I don't know why, I just always have. And I always start in the upper mm -hmm. left, but then I always put uh, some kind of a cloth down over this mm. to, keep, to keep my hands off the canvas. So it's, it's just a personal preference. There's no rule. You know, nobody's gonna come and, and uh, arrest you because you stitched on top or stitched in the well. <laughs> uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. But, uh, so, so you that's... know what I did today? What? I was mounting my canvas and one side has a modely pattern and I, I got it all mounted and I had done it the wrong way. And I had, I had done it where the, the modeled was on the, the back and it, I didn't have it in the well. Oh. So I had to undo my canvas and remount it mm. right after I had finished mounting it. So you have to watch that too before you actually start putting in the tacks where it's the front of your canvas if it has a pattern yeah or modeling on it hmm okay because mine had some modeling uh-huh all right so that's stitching in the well and then st stitching on top so that's that's a decision you make and some people just always stitch in the well some people always stitch on the top then there's weird people like me who do both now i just <laughs> learned something from uh ruth ellen that now I'm going to try because because the, the goal my goal my goal when when mounting uh, canvas for needlepoint or counter canvas work my goal is to get everything as square as I possibly can before I put the first stitch in because I don't want to uh, have to do any more have the framer or, or me do any blocking any more blocking than is necessary after the fact. So I work really hard to make sure that when I start stitching everything is as square as it can be. And now, uh, yeah, Laurie, let me get to you in a second. Let me finish this thought. So, um, yeah. so now this, this particular, I, I buy a, a couple yards of 18 count canvas just to have around. So I just cut this piece off. This thing is really distorted. Like it's distorted long this way um, and it's going to take some work to get it squared up but now uh, uh, um, Ruth Ellen has just posted and see this is a frustration of mine she, I was taught to leave the selvage on but she says to remove the selvage well cross stitch fabric it does pull it tight yeah but, but this isn't cross stitch fabric no, but I'm gonna so. I'm gonna experiment. I'm lopping. I'm gonna lop the uh, selvage off of this and see if it if I get the same effect uh, of of uh -huh. making it easier to square it up because right now it it you know out of the box uh -huh. it's really distorted. So I'm gonna see. 
So I'll, I'll report back on that. I'm gonna uh, tear. I'll tear the tape off and I'll cut that off. And um, you have room, right? Oh yeah, yeah. There's plenty of room. Okay. So um, so I'm gonna try that. So Show. thanks. What? Go ahead. You know how you have those fancy like I have just the plain old what is it the Edmonds wood stretcher bars right that when you wedge them together you have to make sure that they are square and that they're not wonky right before you go to put your canvas on right are you going to show do you, gonna, do you have a square do you, are you going to show I'm, how you do I'm that I'm going to get to that yep I'm going to get oh, to you that haven't, too. okay I wasn't sure if you skip it with these ones or not because no. I don't have these kinds so no that's okay. critical um yeah and I didn't yeah like I said I don't know yeah, no, I, I work, uh, to me, it's like any other, anything else, the prep work is, is as important or more important than the actual finish work. Mm -hmm. And if you don't start out, to me, if you don't start out as square as you can get in the end, somebody's going to have to block it to get it square to frame it or do something with it. And the more blocking has to be done, in my opinion, the better the chance that something will get damaged. So, um, so okay, so then who had, who was that? Lori. Okay, these are, yes, this, this set of stretcher bars are the uh, just a frame and you can't get those anymore because uh, Gary, Gary Kaufman, uh, health got to him and he no longer makes them. So you can't get them anymore. And these are just the best ever made in my opinion. But so sorry, so I, yeah, but this is what I have it mounted on because I have a bunch of these. So, and the reason these, that we have these is you can see that these are not attached. These joints are not attached. That's because there's mechanisms in here that you can use a, uh, an Allen key and separate these to tighten the, tighten the fabric. Okay? So uh, that's the value of those. So then, then the, the option that's available to us now is what's called a just a frame or is called uh, Evertights. And this is, this is Evertight. And if you can get them uh, they're hard to get and have been hard to get for some time now, but uh, mm. they're beautifully made. They're a little pricey, but uh, you know, stretcher bars last forever. So, uh, but if you can get them, get them because they're worth it. I, I, I think you, if you can at all, you want to have uh, Evertights, uh, which is the only option left uh, that can, so, so as you stitch, you can spread these out and tighten your canvas because with what you have there, Jennifer, just conventional mm -hmm. bars, eventually right. your canvas gets a little floppy, and then oh, okay. I always feel like you need to take it all apart and remount it. Hmm. Okay, but now yeah, let's... I haven't done enough to, to yeah. have that yet. Like I've only done, I'm still working on my Dawn to Dusk. It's not even halfway finished, so I haven't. It hasn't done that yet. So right. I don't know. So put, let, I'm going to go hmm. to you. Oh. And whoops, that's not you. Nope. <laughs> that's you. Okay, so hold yours up. Okay. Okay. The, the back. Hold the back side up so we can see the wood. Yeah, this is the back. And then. No, show oh. the other side so we can see the wood. Oh. There we go. Okay. This is the front. So, so this is conventional stretcher well. bar. Yeah. This is conventional <laughs> stretcher bar, and the, the pieces go together. And See, now, they wedge together like that. Yeah. Now, a, a couple of things there is if you turn it endwise so we can see the joint, you see how uh, you, you should be able to take a rubber mallet and uh, pound those and get those all to be flush. Uh oh, I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend that you do that. And then, uh, uh, so that's, that's a conventional stretcher bar. And those, those, everybody has them and they're perfectly good. Uh, you, they're cheap. You, yep, they, they're cheap. They look like they look like this. Yep. And, and you can buy like you know they come two, so you can buy for different sizes. Like if you have a long skinny piece, you have your little bits and then your long bits. Yep. And so you you want uh, so you'll want to pound those with um uh with a, a I use a rubber mallet. Some people use an actual hammer, which I think is a little. Too much, but <laughs> you want to get those. This is soft wood. Yeah, it's soft wood. You want to get those joints all the way in, on, all the way around, and as flush as they'll go, and they should go flush. Um, and then, then what you want to do when you put those together then is you want to get a square. 
And, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go away from you, so you can put that down. Okay. Um, so you want to get a square, and I have this, I just bought this little square here. They're cheap, you know, at Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. Uh, and then, because what you want to do when you put the, the stretcher bars together is you want to make sure that they are square, because they will not be square, I guarantee you, they will not be square. And so before you mount the canvas, you want to make sure that's square. Now, a trick I learned, I believe it was Jennifer Reifenberg taught me this trick on conventional um, stretcher bars, is you go to the hardware store and you get a, a flat right angle, uh, um, they make little pieces of metal. They're just flat right angle metal, oh, uh, okay? And they right. have uh, four, two screw holes on each side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so when you get that squared up, then you put one of those on opposite corners. Oh, does she like screw them in or, yep. or put the tacks through the holes to hold no, it? No, you screw them. You screw them in. Oh, you that's screw a good in. idea. And it's, soft, it's soft wood. You really don't even have to drill, but I drilled holes. Right. Um, but yeah. then, then your stretcher bars will stay square. No yeah, matter what you do. Yeah, it could wobble. Before right. you put the canvas on, you have to make sure it doesn't wiggle. Right. So you get those corners flush, then you put the uh, metal angle uh, pieces on, and you just need two of them. You don't need it on every corner. Then, then it will mm -hmm. stay square, because I had one that got out of square, and I didn't realize it, because I was traveling with it. Oh. And, and, and so uh, I asked her, I, we were talking about it, and she said that that's what she does. So, um, uh, I, and I did that uh, on mine, oh. and it, it works perfectly. Um, Kathy Yance says that from Kathy Ray, she got some frame locks, which are right angle plastics for the corners to keep the corners from. Oh, okay. So apparently they sell something that, and Kathy Ray has them frame lock. Okay. Kathy Yance in the comments, I just read that. Yeah. Okay. So they make something like if you really want like an, a needlepoint thing. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. So you want something cool. that'll hold those conventional bars square because uh, they will get out of square and then your canvas will get twisted. Uh, it'll get out of square and then you'll get frustrated. And then when you pull it off <laughs> and you go to block, it has to be blocked and blah, 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 blah. So uh -huh. <clears throat> um, all this seems like a whole lot, but it's really not that much, but it's worth it if you go to all this trouble. And Sandy, yes, you're right. If you use an actual hammer, but hit another piece of wood, then you won't damage your... Um, uh, yeah. Stretcher bars, yes. But uh, I just use a rubber mallet. So <laughs> I, I highly re recommend that you get a square. You know, they're mm -hmm. a couple bucks at Lowe's. You don't need a great big long one, but just some kind of a square. Then you have something to measure with. And uh, so this, yeah, this is my stitching square. Um, ah. Yeah, I just You know what it. I did? What? I, li I have my quilt, my quilt cutting grid here on my table. My oh, quilt okay. ruler mat. And I just lined it up with my, yeah. and I squared it off on my quilt mat. And yeah. I did loop, go around and make sure all the sides were square. Yeah. That's what I did. So, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever gives you a square. Yeah. But, something, um, something square, you know, yep. find something. You could, it could be like a book corner. Right. Exactly. You know, and you'd like, you set it on top of the book and you, you make sure that it's not out of whack. Yep. Yep. Just you want it square. So you, when you when you start mounting your canvas on here, you want to know that your stretcher bars are, are absolutely square, all four corners, um, because right. th the minute you put that, things just get distorted over time, and so the it's like you know it's like painting a wall. The better you prep the wall, the better <laughs> your result, and uh, you know it's no different for anything else. So so then it comes to the stretcher bars, okay? And you'll notice I I mark. It's, it's probably not necessary, but I always mark a top. I always make one side a top. Right. And I, I mark that. It's a good idea. Um, especially for county canvas. Like, I just put a piece of artist tape on and put top on there. I don't know mm -hmm. why I didn't write on the wood, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, so I always mark a top. That way I, I always am treat, approaching the same, the, especially if it's a geometric, I'm always approaching it in the same way. And is that the center that you marked there? 
This come the Evertites are marked. Each bar oh, is marked. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, each bar is marked. It's actually cut in there, marked oh, on the center, okay. and it's marked uh, all the way oh, around. Yeah. I see. Yeah, these are expensive, all but right. they you got all the little extra things in them. Yeah. And they're sanded. Nice. They're sanded, silky smooth too. Nice. Not necessary, but uh, yeah. So that's huh. your center. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's nice. Okay. So then, then the Evertites, they come as, just as bars too, like everything else. Mm -hmm. Now, when you put these together, here's here. Yeah, you can see that. Okay. Yeah. So this is the the little nut, <laughs> and then here is where you put the Allen key. Okay. Oh, okay. And you turn this screw, and there's one over here. Whoops, let me get, I'm going the wrong way. There's one over here for this nut. When you mm -hmm. turn this, that pushes this against this wood here. And that moves, right. it moves the, the, this bar out. Right. And then when you turn this one, it moves this, this bar out. So do you have to move, do you have to turn every corner equally? Yes. Because otherwise it's going to get out of whack, right? Right. Right. Okay. I always wondered about that. I was like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, if you, if you need to tighten up your, um, if you need to tighten up your, your, uh, um, so you have to pay attention to what you're doing when your, you tighten yeah, your canvas. What I do is, is like a quarter turn, like a uh -huh. quarter turn on each corner all the way around and then see if it's tight. So you try to do about the same amount. Right. All okay. the way around, and you take your time until you get it drum tight again. Mm -hmm. And usually if you've mounted it well and it's tight to start, you don't have to turn it much as you work on the project. But <clears throat> some canvases are give a little more than others, you know. Oh, okay. Um, and it's a 332nd Allen key. Is, it comes is, with, right? Uh, I, no, it did not come. This, oh, you uh, have to buy your own? This I had, yeah. Really? That's yeah. No, it did not come kind of with weird. it. Well, the uh, the uh, these here. I mean, here, it's got to come with a little tiny Allen wrench. You know, the little ones that yeah. they send with the. No. IKEA always comes with an Allen wrench. Oh <laughs> no! Uh, e even these, you had to buy what he calls a tool kit. Really? So, yeah, he, yeah. He doesn't ship because that's just expense. You only need one. I guess so. So, so go to Lowe's. If you can find an Allen key with a handle on it, get it. Because most yeah. Allen, Allen keys are just an L-shaped piece of metal. But if you can find right. one like this, it's so much easier to, uh, just so much easier to turn yeah. and tell how far you turned it. And then you don't get metal residue on your hands. Right, right. So uh, 330 seconds is, the, is what the Evertites are. Oh, okay. So, and Bonhus um, is, is one brand, but you know, tool section, 332nd. So, uh, but get one with a handle, you'll be happier. Okay. I'm learning all kinds of stuff. Oh my goodness. All these things I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, now the other thing that, I, that you do with Evertites is when you put them together, you need to make sure that this nut is all the way retracted, okay? Right. Because they are not all out of the package, they are not. You want it uh -huh. all the way retracted because when you put these together, you want to put them in, together all the way so that the, that the nut that's, that's attached to this goes, butts against this piece of wood. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, you'll see that these are not flush. Like yours need to be flush, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. These are not. Right, because cause they're meant to move. Right, because this is the this is the movement part is out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you need to put them all the way together and make sure those nuts are retracted. And the reason you make sure the nuts are retracted, because when you jam them all the way in, if one is sticking out, then you cannot get these this square. Right. And 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 it will go together square. Uh, it will go together dead square. Uh, so. And again, um, uh, rubber mallet. I use rubber mallet and and to pawn it because these fit tight, and so I just used a rubber mallet and went around and and uh, um, 
got them all to, to go in and get square. And, and it, when you get it all together, it might be, you know, kind of wonky. And if you wiggle it a little bit, you can get it square, but it's, it's absolutely worth it to get it square. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, wall, it's wall prep. It pays off. So, uh, now you can't, it's really hard to, to, because these things stick out, it's really hard to measure square on the outside. So you have to do it on the inside. Oh, right. But no big deal. You know, get a smaller book. So, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> Um, okay, so then now, now you've got this squared, everything's ready to go, you know that you're square, so now you're going to mount the, the canvas. And this is where I know I can, I cut this a little big, so I know I can cut the salvage off. Right. And, and uh, so this, that's, though I, I learned something there, i got to give that a try. Mm -hmm. And I was really frustrated, this is so out of square. Okay, oh, so. Oh, yeah. So then, again, back to the decision, are you going to stitch in the well? Or are you going to stitch on top? Okay, it doesn't matter because this canvas you can you can say, all right, I'm going to stitch on top. You can mount it and say, oh no, I changed my mind. I'm going to stitch in the well. Flip it over. You're in the well. Yeah, as you long know. as it, you're not trying to stitch on a pattern side like I was. Right. And I put it on wrong, and I had to take it off and redo it. Right. That then becomes a problem. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so now, now it comes time for the tax, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do all these. Uh, it's just going to be quick and dirty. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I went to the local needlepoint shop, Sign of the Arrow, wonderful people, painted canvas shop, so of limited to me. But they had, uh, um, they had uh, tax. And she... She gave me one. I said, I need tax to mount. She gave me one box. I said, no, I need, I need three. She looked at me like <laughs> I was crazy. And it's like, hey, because these things will bend. When you put them in the wood, yeah. some will bend. And then when you take them out, some more will bend. And sometimes, sometimes they break off. Yeah. And I'm sure there are better tax. And people have told me what a better tax. But these are what I could get and what I knew. So I got them. That's, so, that's what I bought. Yep. I keep mine in a jar after I take them out. I have these little jars yeah. that I put them in. That's, that's those what I have. Because things pop in and out. But that, That's what I have, too, is I have a jar. Ah. I'll, dump, I'll dump all these in, yeah, because these stupid yep. little boxes. Yeah, oh, headache. my goodness. And I have animals, and I walk around barefoot. Yeah, not good. Mm. Yeah. The, um, this little blue thing that's in here, people wonder what that is. That's so you can lift the, the tacks out. So that, yeah, very, it's got, yeah. Very handy. It's got a thing so you can lift the tax out. Now, a, a tip about this. This thing is functional at best. And mm -hmm. if, if, if you have uh, you know, a little arthritis in your hands or not a lot of hand strength, these tend to not be the best. You can go look for, most needlework shops will have them. I'm sure Kim has them. Um, there is a set that have wooden handles on them and have a, a, a length and then have a, a fork that will give you some leverage and make it a whole lot easier to take them out. And it comes as a set because there, there'll be a fork to lift the, the uh, uh, tack out and then there's another one that you can use to push the tack in. Yeah, so it, it has I've a, seen that. Yeah, it has a flat man, thing. Your, your thumb can get sore after a while. Right, right. <laughs> so so if, you, if you find that uh, mounting these things is physically painful, and for, for a lot of people it is, look, uh, ask your local needlework store for, uh, for that set. And it's not real expensive, and then your life will be a whole lot more pleasant. So, um, nice. okay. Are there questions coming up? I don't see any people just, you know... Okay. Making little comments here. Nothing, ma nothing major. Okay. All right. Nope. Okay. So, all right. Here's here's how we start. Now, um, I line this thing up, and then I put in. Uh, it, you just line it up the best you can, and then you put that first tack in, like that. Okay. And then. And and this is where why mainly why I have the towel is I don't want to scratch up the table, so. That was supposed to go in the middle, 
Well, well, well done. <laughs> a little off center. Well, just a hair. Like, and, 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 you know, there's a line here for crying out loud. I think I could hit the line, wouldn't you? All right. So you just put that first tack in. Okay. Then you go opposite and you pull this canvas. All right. Now see this canvas is too big because ideally you would put the pins, the tacks into the tape, right. but I've cut it too big, but that's okay. Cause I'm taking that selvage off. Cause I'm going to see yeah. if that works. Cause that'll be handy for you. Yeah. Even so, with quilting fabric, the selvage, it pulls the, cause that's the edge where they, you know, start and end of the weaving, especially yeah. start the weaving and it, it pulls it all too tight. So yeah. you have to cut it off and it really does well, help. <laughs> Yeah. After the show, I'm about to find out. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so, so you pull this tight, and, and you want to pull it pretty tight, like like as, as tight as you can. I mean, you can see that there's that's, that's pretty snug, and then you put a tack in, in the middle. And then you go here, and, and I pull it just a little bit, mm -hmm. and and put a tack in there and then I go to the other end and now I pull pretty good so that the, the center here is going to be pretty tense right mm -hmm. here so I, I pull pretty good as, as hard as I can hold it down and put a tack in okay now that sets my that sets my base all right now becomes the tedious this this is the tedious part now the first thing I'll do and this is just me, a lot of people don't bother with this, but the first thing I'll do is I'll put the square on to see how square the threads are. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, now yeah. if, they're, if they're way off, if they're way off, that's blocking. That's gonna require blocking at the, on the back side. Mm -hmm. so, so I get them as square as I can within reason. You can drive yourself nuts, but mm -hmm. I get them as square as I can, the threads vertically and horizontally, because I just keep reminding myself, if I have to monkey around a little bit now, that's blocking that does not have to be done when you're ready to frame the piece or you're ready to finish it into something. Uh, the square, the better you have it. Um, the last time that I turned in a needlepoint piece to be framed, uh, the framer said she didn't have to block it at all. And it was like victory, you know. Nice. Um, so, so to me, that's important. Uh, you want it as close as you can get it. I think it's worth the trouble. I really do. A little fiddling around. See, so taking tacks out, pulling it a little bit, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we got the base in, all right? Now it's, now it's just working side to side. So you put, it, put in a tack, and then I go here and put in a tack. I'm pulling it tight all the time. Okay, I'm pulling mm -hmm. it tight all the time. Put in a tack. And you just you just you pull it each time. And and just keep working your way around. And I, I always go opposites. Okay? And then Just keep working around, and I'm not going to do all these because it gets pretty obvious what you're doing. So you're, you're pulling yeah. it tight, and what you can tell that now what you're doing is down here, now instead of one width, I now have three widths, all is pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Okay? And also note that the tacks are close. Mm -hmm. You want the tacks close because that's going to have the tension be as even as possible across the whole thing. Don't put tacks in this far out. Right. Because because this this can be sloppy in here, see? You right. want the tacks close. Yeah, you want I the tacks close. I didn't close. put mine super close. <laughs> yeah. I think and, I did on the other ones though. Yeah. My other ones they're back there. And it's the same thing with any size canvas. You do it this way. Right. Congress yep. claw Bigger yeah. canvas, smaller, yeah. Yep. And so you just keep working your way out, okay? You just just keep working, and, and I just keep turning, and, and, and this to here, then yeah, this to here, 
back and forth, back and forth, and then and, until you get to the end and the corners, and then um, then you're all uh, then you're you're locked down. So so that's what you do. But the, the the really it's really important that you keep these these tacks close together. It really is. It makes a huge difference. Uh, you know, if you make if you have big gaps, you've got channels all the way across your canvas that are not as tight as they can be, and they'll get looser than the ones that are being held by tacks as you right. stitch. And then things start getting wonky, and it gets harder to do your tension right. And uh, it just makes you know it's it's that prep work. It just makes a big difference. So yeah. so you just work your way uh, out, center out. So that's why you need so many tacks. Too. Yes. Yeah, these were 350 for the box. I bought three boxes. Uh, I'm sure that somebody I'm sure knows a better tax support supply that's stronger tax, where you can buy. Like I'd buy a pound of them if I could. Um, yeah. Because I'm always looking for tax. So, so then when you're all done, and, and you have all the tax all the way around, then this should be just about drum tight. It really should be all the way around. You should be able to kind of gently bounce your fingers all the way around and feel a nice drum tightness. Then, once you have that down, and you, you know it's as square as you can make it, everything like that, that's when you go to your Allen key, and mm -hmm. you go to these corners, and you turn like a quarter turn on each corner, and then you test again. Because you with these Evertights, you can get this thing absolutely drum tight, like uh, you know, like you could play cymbals with it. I mean, oh my gosh! It, it, you can get it that tight, and it will stay there. And mm -hmm. and and it's so lovely. It's so worth it because it's so lovely to stitch on absolutely tight canvas. You know, your tension is easier. The holes are more consistent. All the things, um, nice. absolutely worth it. So that's it. Cool. Woohoo! Thank you, Nooper. Very nice. Good point. I missed that point. Yeah, don't tack down the corners uh, with these adjustable frames oh. because, um, yeah, you want to leave that, that loose because that's your, your give. Thank you, Nooper. Right. So leave oh, that yeah. corner. Don't, don't slap a tack right here in the corner <laughs> because you need, the, you need these pieces to be able to move. Mm -hmm. Yay, Nooper. Thank you for that. Yep. <clears throat> So that's, and that's all there is to it. I mean, it, it took forever nice. to explain it, but um, uh, and it's, it's just really, it's, it's really relaxing, quite frankly. Put a movie on TV and sit here and, and um, uh, you know, <laughs> pin canvas to, to wood. Um, <laughs> uh, but but uh, get, get those tools. If, 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 if your thumb starts hurting and, and your arm and your wrist and your shoulder, you know, those tools will make a huge difference. They're not that expensive. And uh, they'll just take the pain and, and agony out of doing this. But like Evertights, this is a really nice wood, and those tacks, they pushed right in, no problem at all. Um, yeah. Nice. So there we have it. Woohoo! That's all I know. Lovely. <laughs> so now I, and I learned. So I, I'm I'm almost I'm anxious to. I'm going to put us back on. Okay. I'm anxious to try that, cutting the selvage off and see what happens now. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. So uh, I hope that helped everyone. Um, that, uh, that you can go ahead and do yeah. it. And you know, obviously this is recorded so you can go back and look uh, uh, as many times as you want. Um, Cindy, I put the tack puller under the canvas. It's easier to get under the tack. Oh, good point. Now see, there's another one. Mm -hmm. So here, so let me, thank you, Cindy. Yeah, Cindy's done a few of these. Yeah, I don't know what she's talking about. Two or three. <laughs> she puts the, she puts the, uh, oh. what she's saying is, and pops it like so much that. crap in the way. She puts it underneath. Oh, look at that. Oh, Cindy. Oh. Oh, Cindy. I Victory, see. right there. Oh, man, that's like night and day. Wow. Oh, 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 look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's, a, that's awesome. There it is right there. There's, there's the pro tip right there. Thank you, Cindy. For look sure. at that. Oh, that's like mm -hmm. night and day. Yeah, because when I had to take mine out, 
put them back <sighs> in earlier today. Some of them came out okay, and some of them I'm fighting it. Oh, I'm excited now. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> it's such a little thing, but it makes, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Ha, huh, never thought of that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh my Those suckers goodness. are all out right Yay. now. Go, Cindy. Thank you. Awesome. Outstanding. All right. Victory on that one. Cool. Yeah. Measuring from corner to corner to find the center. Do I'm putting you go this back from on. Hole to hole. Hole to hole. Yeah. I just go from the corner. Um, yeah. It to me the thread thing is just an easy way to get that center because there there are other other people have techniques for using tape measures and other things and uh, to me I keep kept having to go back and forth to get, make sure I had the center. So um, here, let me, just give me a second here. This tape's coming off anyway, so, cause that cell yeah. is coming off. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> cause it drives me nuts when needlepoint canvas is not square. <coughs> mm -hmm. Going back to the. Uh, <coughs> Do you ever like <coughs> spritz your canvas and iron it? No. Oops, wrong one. No, if not gonna, uh, there. If, that one, not needlepoint. They're gonna canvas, block no. it. That's how they block it, right? They wet it and then yeah. stretch it. Yeah. So if it's really wonky, even if you take the thing, can you pre-block it before you mount it? Oh yeah, doing? yeah. And and yeah. and that's what I was gonna have to do with this one. Was I was gonna have to pre-block it to get it square? Until right. uh, was it Kathy Renard? I think. Uh, mentioned about cutting the selvage off. Now I'm going to see because yeah, I was this was right. so out of whack. I was going to have to pre-block it. Yeah. And when you pre-block it, do you just let it dry naturally or do you iron it? Oh, I'd let it dry naturally. Oh, okay. Let's see, I don't know. So I, I'm I'm a quilter. You iron it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it was the whole thing that we were after, right? Bear with yeah, me. Yeah, like. I guess maybe because if the selvage is on there, she, I guess she was wondering if you include the selvage in the centering up part. Oh, I did. But I guess I did. You're, you now did. Now that I'm cutting you're the selvage taking it off. off now, so now you have yeah. to find a new center. So, right. So let me just get. So don't forget to find a new center. You might want to take your little center doohickey out. Right. Because it yeah, might I will. be correct. I will. Jeez. Okay, so here's what, you know, yeah, I go corner to corner. So, um, so to, to do this, I would put, this is why you do it before you tape. Um, I would put in this hole right here in the corner and then all the way to this hole in this corner, as close to the corner as I can get and string, and then string the thing across. And you could baste it, you know, you, it's okay to baste it, but it's a lot of hassle for mm -hmm. Something that's only going to be in about five minutes. And so, right. yeah, corner to corner. That's why I, I should have done it before I taped it so that you can get in the true corner and get the oh. angle. Yeah. But I got right. I got ahead of myself when I was doing it. And then we have a question about, you know how you, about these bars, um, how, at what point do you need to replace them because you have so many tacky holes in? <clears throat> or does it never a problem? Uh, you flip it over and use the other side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, after a few years, if you do a lot of projects, you'll get so many holes you can't find good wood. Flip it over, use the other side for another five oh, years. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Both sides work. All right. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, these things, you know, you think, oh, my, Evertites are expensive. You're going to use them forever before they wear out. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, don't worry about Unless it. Unless you're some sort of a stitching machine. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like whipping them out like yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but but now if if I'm put us both both back on here. Um, okay. But if you're if you're first time, and you're not sure you want to do kind of canvas a lot, buy the buy the ones like Jennifer bought because they're they're really cheap. And then if you don't like it, then you know so what? They're four chunks of wood that you didn't invest much money in. 
Uh, but but put the metal pieces. I wish I'd have thought. Um, I've got them somewhere in a jar. Anyway, put yeah, those metal pieces on to keep them square. It is absolutely worth it. I'll have them. Uh, I'll have them um, the next time. <clears throat> um, it's absolutely worth it to do that. Uh, what's Edna saying? Cut the salvage off live if you feel brave. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I want to. Come on, uh, do it. It's not a matter of bravery. It's just do people want to sit here while I'm cutting salvage off? Oh, they want to watch you melt down when you miss cut. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's like cutting your knitting when you're knitting and you learn how to do steaks and, and you learn how to cut holes in it on purpose. Oh, people freak out. I took a class on it learn how to cut your knitting so you can and that's how i did sophie's little sweater i where i got her holes right where i wanted them Yay! oh okay selfish cut okay very nice now i gotta let this relax a little bit i am really excited yeah, to see i was gonna say you're yeah. gonna let it relax overnight you're gonna spritz it and i don't, I don't know if i'll do you that just gonna i think i'll just let it be let it be natural yeah so okay well we'll see nice <clears throat> And that was, oh, that was the other thing that I was going to talk about. When you, when you get your canvas, especially a regular 18 count canvas, uh, shipped to you rolled up, you know, mm -hmm. that's, so it isn't creased. And you, apparently you can iron this thing, but boy, I, I don't like. So when it's, when it's like this, and then you undo it and you get this, just take... And, and reverse roll it, just gently, mm -hmm. reverse roll it, and then put a rubber band or a Velcro strip around each end, like that. And just wait five minutes. Oh, okay. And then take it off and it will, it will lay very flat. And then what oh. I do, see, it Because I was right fighting mine. <laughs> yeah, no. And then what I do is then I'll put it on the table and then lay the stretcher bars over the top of it and leave it for a couple hours. And then it'll be flat and all that hassle goes away. Because, yeah, that can be a pretty irritating curve to deal with. Uh, just yeah. reverse roll it and um, uh, it'll, it'll come flat. These are, these are the handiest thing. You can get these at Home Depot. These are Velcro strips. Where am I at? Here, here am I at. Yeah. <laughs> These Velcro strips, they're that real fine Velcro. Mm -hmm. um, hang on. They're really cheap. <clears throat> and they come in they come in rolls like this. Oh wow. And so you just peel one off. Like so. Oh. Okay? Okay. And they have a slot. So like for cords. Uh -huh. um, you know, you put it in the slot, pull it tight, and Velcro it down. But uh -huh. I always, I always have a roll of these hanging around, particularly for stitching, because if I want to roll up and store a piece of canvas, then these are a lot better than rubber bands or tape. Yeah. If I'm gonna, nice. if I, if I'm putting, if I'm putting them on PVC pipe to travel with, because I don't want a piece crease. I, mm -hmm. I, I wrap these around because then they're reusable and, um, but yeah, you can, you just get them in the Velcro section at Lowe's or, or Home Depot. And, Those are uh, cool. Yeah. These are just the handiest thing. It, once you get them in the house, you will find yourself using them for all kinds of things. I mean, I all bet. kinds of things. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, wow. and they're cheap and there's, you know, there's, there's gray and black and I'm sure there's 14 other designer colors, but who cares? <laughs> You know, spare me that. Um, nice. But yeah, these are, these are, uh, get those and they're cheap. And if you lose one, you don't care, you know, it's not going to break the bank. Um, okay. Hair scrunchies for reverse rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Anything like that. Yep. Okay. Finding the center attaching and you know, mounting the canvas first. Yeah. You, Everybody has their variations. Yep, you can do that definitely. Yep. Um, yeah. 
But to, to me, finding that center and marking it, and, and I leave that in there till I know, till I know that it, <clears throat> that it doesn't matter anymore. Like right. it, it, this was basted, because that's what Gan said to do. And I actually just, I, I had done all this stitching before I pulled even the basting out. Mm -hmm. You know, I just stitch right over there because that way I had a guide all the way till I knew I was, my center was established, centered and, and good to go. It's, um, right. yeah, it's, yeah, it's just thread. Yeah, that's what I always do with my cross stitch. I always have my X and my Y yeah. lines in. Yep. I don't know if you could, it's light peach, so it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. It but. is hard to see, but yeah, they're there. Yep. I always yep. put them in. The one time I tried not doing it, I got way out of whack. <laughs> yep. Because yep. you can check yourself all up along. There's so many places to double check. Yep. And yeah, there's real value in it. I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. But but if if you're doing mystery in Saint Tropez, if Gay and Roger says to baste, you baste. Trust me. She she knows exactly what she's talking about, <laughs> and she is she is telling you to do that to save you hassle. And I speak from experience because I have not done it. I've ignored Gayan and yeah. <laughs> Live to regret it, huh? Pepper pot silk has gone in the trash because I ignored Gayan. So um, <laughs> <laughs> there we have that. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Uh, holy smokes, it's 815. Um, wow. Did we get everybody's questions in? I think, I think so. we did. There was just a whole lot of, yeah, yeah, I do that too. And... Yeah, okay. I think we got it all in then. So, all right, there's mounting canvas. Um, awesome. So that's the, ne that's, that, you know, that's a big step. Once you get that uh, canvas mounted and the center found and everything's squared up, then, um, uh, then you're ready to stitch and you'll be stitching on a good surface that's, that you know is gonna be stable for you all the way through. Uh, you'll, you'll be a lot happier, it's worth it. Put a movie on, get a table in front of you, take your time. Make an afternoon of it if you have to, but take the time to get it right, and uh, you'll you'll be glad you did, because. Um, and then, as we talk about in the video, Beth and I did for these instructions. Go get sleeves yeah. and a, and a three ring binder and get these in sleeves. Same yeah. reason, it will just eliminate so much hassle. Um, oh well I worth know. it. Yep. I, I kind of looked at them a little, and I looked at the first page, and I just go. I guess I'll just go page by page. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot I guess instructions. I got to sit down and do that, but um, worth it. Uh, gift a significant amount of needlepoint fabric. They're extremely stiff. They would never roll. How would you bring the canvas back to life? They're extremely stiff. It would never roll. It's, I don't, I'm not sure I understand. I'm not sure I understand, Ruth Ellen. By bringing it back to life, I mean, stiff and flat is what you want. So, help me out. Oh, here, I didn't get a binder, but one inch rings into the sleeves to keep them together. Okay, yep. Oh. Yep, that can work. Yep. And give you something you can hang it up then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to hang in here to see if Ruth Ellen can give me some clarification. I'm not sure what she means. All right. Otherwise, we're going to be done. Um, oh, uh, wh while we're waiting for Ruth Ellen, uh, get your uh, emails in to get in the drawing. One for Canvas, and that gets the, uh, uh, now I've, I've buried everything under 15 million things. <laughs> uh, get you in the drawing for one of these three, uh, three um, County Canvas pieces. And then uh, the subject line Army gets you in the drawing for the Army chart. If, if that's something that uh, you can use. So uh, enter one, the other, both, but, but only one, one entry per, please. Um, 
Uh, I think we're going to sign off uh, uh, and be done here. Ruth Ellen, write me an email. Use the email that's on the bottom of the screen there. Write me an email and I'll uh, try and help you out. Uh, just, I just don't understand what, you're, what you mean, so give me a little clarification and I'll try and help you out. Um, if not, I'll get you in touch with somebody who, uh, who will. Mm -hmm. That's all we got. We're going to call right, it. Yep. Thanks for Bye. joining us. Uh, yep. Lots of people saying they learned something. So um, Yeah, I learned lots. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, I forgot, Cindy. I got so busy today. Uh, I'm going to do that next time. Thank you, oh, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Yep. That's another brilliant Cindy thing. Cindy is just <laughs> full of them. Yep. Okay, we're out. Thanks a lot, everybody. Right. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Bye.